ಸಹನಾವತು ಸಹನೋ ಗುಣತ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಯಂಕರಮಾವಹೈ ನೇಜಸ್ವಿನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಓಂ ಶಾಂತಿ chapter 21 at the water the very initial stages of evolution the human is totally involved in the worldly pursuits it just goes on acquiring and enjoying the world it's a very simple lifestyle and he feels this is the direct way of living life it is so obvious you are born you go to school you get educated then take up a job get married produce children educate them settle them retire you know what to do after that attend attend vedanta class and then die that's it you know this is the life this is a very obvious one you know what is there to to pro what is there to inquire what is there to be done nothing you know it is so direct and simple for many but over a period of time what happens is this human starts feeling is that all life or is there anything more than that he start he starts to wonder he starts probing he start inquiring he starts questioning is that all life purposes i'm born of course then of course i got good education or mediocre education i got a good job mediocre job got life lived life then continue is that all or is there anything more to it and he starts inquiring is there anything more to it this is where spiritual education starts up to this point there is no spiritual education spiritual teaching is not come into picture religion doesn't come into picture after this only religion is born religion has a relevance in your life till that time it has no relevance you may go to temple church mosque or go to gurudwara do this do that you can do whatever you want and you can study vedanta also all that has no meaning unless you start asking this fundamental question is that all that is a time we are introduced god yes this is not the purpose of human life there is something more to it what is that what is god how did this world come about how god created the world what is the srishti krama the creation and what is our role in this creation why you are placed here your job is to serve god etc etc all these ideas will be given after you start practicing doing all those things following those instructions then a sort of a, a mental maturity comes into picture an emotional maturity comes into picture to that matured mind balanced mind this mahavakya is well given so first stage total involvement in the world then you get saturated in that worldly lifestyle there is no problem as such for you in life all your no regrets when i say no problems in the sense there is no regrets in your life that's the meaning of complete life you see now almost 99% has a regret 
regret is what two types of regrets one what i wanted to do i didn't do what i should have done i didn't do or what i shouldn't have done i did either you feel regret you know as you get older as you go presumably you know we are nearing death so there a death but everybody has this regret what two things no such regret should be there in your life that is what we call as materially satisfied worldly fulfilled right second one is to him the idea of god is introduced then comes this karma upasana bhakti basic knowledge of vedanta little knowledge is given this all those things were taught vedas were taught to him the upanishads were taught to him the spiritual knowledge is imparted then he was as given a direction to how he should live this life practice of karma yoga uh, bhakti yoga upasana yoga this yoga that yoga all sorts of yogas right then a different kind of maturity comes this is the secondary maturity the primary maturity is the first one now today for most of us the primary maturity itself looks like you know mahatma for us the person who has attained that primary maturity itself we think you know he is a legendary personality like that shows our you know standard like in my life i got only once first mark in the class only once in my life i got with so much of pride i come to my house and i tell my dad he asked me if this is the first mark in your class i can imagine your other friends i'm not going to tell you how much i scored okay this is correct if this is what we call as a great personality a great man that shows the poverty of our condition today that's about it so beyond that first stage you go you are introduced to the spiritual disciplines and then comes the third stage where a different kind of maturity achieved there this mahavakya is introduced to that person this mahavakya is were given the upanishads give that mahavakya and that mahavakya we have seen there are four mahavakyas we take of course there are every upanishad contains a mahavakya right but traditionally we have taken one mahavakya from one veda so the first one we have taken is this prajnanam brahma the conscious principle prajnana means the conscious principle with which we are conscious of everything but that conscious principle is not available to be conscious of prajnana you know what is the meaning of prajnana the definition is this the conscious principle if i give example it will become easier okay uh, you know last two classes have been too heavy so let's try to make it little easier today okay we'll try it uh, just an attempt right prajnanam brahma what is prajnanam sir prajnanam means the conscious principle what is the conscious principle the principle with which you are aware of you are conscious of all that comes together there the principle with which you know what you know the principle with which you know what you do not know that conscious principle for example prajnanam brahma example you need to remember is this light 
Pragyanam Brahma is equal to light. With light only, you are able to see various objects. The existence of an object or the absence of an object, both you are able to recognize because of the presence of light. But the light is not available for see. You cannot see light. Light is imperceptible. That imperceptible light is what is facilitating all perceptions to happen. But you can't perceive that light. Right. Same way here, the consciousness with which you are conscious of. I am conscious of the sound, I am conscious of the smell, I am conscious of the taste, touch, thoughts, emotions, agreement, disagreement, honor, dishonor, in everything you are aware of today, all that, that waking state, the dream state, the deep sleep state, all that states of consciousness that, that you are conscious of is because of the backdrop of that consciousness. How can I know that consciousness, sir? If you ask, he will say what? Go back to Karma Bhakti Jnana. Don't pro pro proceed with Maha Mahavakya. You cannot progress with Mahavakya. If you ask a quick question, why we started by saying light, definition of light is it facilitates you to see things, but light is not available for perception. That's the definition of it. Now we are asking how to see that. All the light that you are seeing is a reflected light. So, what is light? Light is imperceptible. But without light, can you see anything? Not. Don't tell me, sir, I am looking at tube light. Hmm? I know what, what, what you are all thinking. I am seeing the tube light now, sir. Even the tube light that you are seeing is not the light. It is reflected with the tube. Not the original light. That's a reflected light. Original light cannot be seen. Original light is what? Uh, between your eye and the tube light. In between, what is that? Are you able to see anything in between? In between, you can't see anything. See that? That's impossible. No one can see because that is the medium. With eye, you can see anything in the world, but you can't use your eyes to see your eyes. So what is the proof of the existence of your eye? What is the proof for the existence of light? The proof for the existence of light is established from the fact that you are able to see things, right? So whenever you are seeing, you are not only establishing the existence of the system, a book. Is there a book, sir? Yes, there's a book. I have a book in front of me. Yes, there is a book here. I'm seeing the book. Yes. The fact that I am able to see this book is the proof there is light. Isn't it? I said it is easy, but I don't know for how many of you it is easy. To me, it looks very simple. What is the proof of light? You are seeing the book only, actually, but the fact that you are able to see the book is the proof of light. Similarly, what is the proof of the existence of consciousness? The pure consciousness which is not available for being aware of. You can never be aware of that consciousness. It is not possible. But then, what is the proof of its existence, sir? 
the proof is you are conscious right do you have a doubt hmm? are you jadam you say what no 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 i am a chetana being you say no i am a sentient being right the fact that you are able to claim yourself to be a sentient being is the proof for the existence of consciousness you know that's enough we don't have to go in for some laboratory immediately vedanta will not go for laboratory on quantum mechanics and quantum physics and all that it's a redundant job it straight away it is established are you a sentient one you are a chetana vastu or a jada vastu according to you according to me i will say you are a jadam correct jadam means you know inert yes so we are a jadam he said it's a colloquial term we use jadam means you know dumb no it is also there dumbest one is what inert objects are dumb ones you see the plants are conscious animals are more conscious humans are the most conscious ones so jada means what no objects now what are you according to you it's like a person saying i am a dumb person sir i cannot speak the fact that he is saying that is a proof what what he is saying is i cannot speak i am dumb but the fact that he had spoken is the proof same way what is a proof for consciousness na you are aware according to you what are you answer that question and then we will proceed so once you say i am that chaitanya vastu then we start asking that question of what is that chaitanyam in you now our understanding is chaitanyam is conditioned consciousness chidabhas or what they call us condition consciousness now the fact that there is a condition consciousness means there has to be a pure consciousness the fact that there is a reflected light there has to be a incident light without an incident light there is no possibility of so therefore any time you say i know i am aware i am conscious whenever you use these words what are you referring to what is that word refers to is that pragnanam therefore it says pragnanam brahma that unconditioned consciousness with which you are conscious of everything that is brahman what is god he starts inquiring what is god now initially when you has introduced the idea of god it will be introduced as a person who is a creator who is a maintainer who is a dis- destroyer he takes care of this he is the karma bala data this one that one all those things will be given to you initially in the preliminary stage but then a stage would come where he starts asking this question that 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 is where in the that is where in the thir- 13th chapter krishna says kshetrajnyam chapimam vidhi sarva kshetreshu bharat i am the kshetrajna i am that kshetrajna the principle the conscious principle in all the kshetras all the beings everywhere i am that that consciousness is referred to but whatever we understand is what in individual you understand as me consciousness plus body mind intellect equipments right same way consciousness plus all body mind and intellect put together so where is your concentration where is your focus are you focusing on the equipments or are you focusing on what is enabling those equipments to function 
the fact that the equipments are functioning is this. This is one, one angle we go. Another angle through which we come is all that we know of this, this is a nose ring. This is a bangle. A bangle is different. Nose ring is different. But then, essentially, what are they? Essentially, this gold. So, when you go to the foundation, when you go to what is the substratum of bangles, nose ring, this jewelry, jar jewelry, this necklace, you have this one, you have that one, earrings, all that various Nama Rupa. So, all that you know of is what? Nama Rupa, Nama Rupa, Nama Rupa. This Nama and Rupa, name and form. What is the substratum for that name and form? Is gold. So, what you have to do is Nama Rupa is not real because Nama Rupa is variable. It will not be there permanently. Whereas gold is permanent. Of course, with reference to the jewelry. In the example, same way we take whenever you see in the world Every time you see a bangle, every time you see those jewelries, ignore the name and form, focus on the substratum. Ignore what you are aware of, focus on what is making you. Ken Upanishad, Shrotrasya Shrotram Manaso Mano Yat Vacho Havacham Pranasya Prana. Chakshushas Chakshuhu Radimucha Dira Pretya Smart Loka Damurta Bhagat. This is ear of the ear, eye of the eye. What is this mind of the mind? Prana of the prana. What is that, sir? That is go beyond this Nama Rupa, transcend that Nama Rupa. But the problem is what pure gold is not available for seeing. If you go to pure gold, you can't recognize it. It's not available. Of course, in the example, it is available. Of course, don't 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 tell me, sir. I have gold biscuit. Again, it is what gold biscuit or gold coin. Then what is the gold that you are having, sir? Gold bond only will have, and there is no gold in that bond. Isn't it? Your person says, I have a gold bond, sir. Gold bond for 5 lakhs. There is gold. Now, it's a paper. There is gold in that. There is no gold there. Gold is not available for perception directly. In and through that Nama Rupa, you understand the presence of gold. Delete this Nama Rupa and concentrate on gold. That is Pragnanam Brahma. Now the light with which everything is revealed, the consciousness which reveals everything, that revealer cannot be revealed, cannot be known. If that cannot be known, at all, then how are we to know that? If it is impossible to be known, we say, no, no, no. It's not that it is impossible to be known. It is impossible to be known by the equipments. What is that equipment? The instruments with which we get to know things. What are the instruments we employ? We employ the senses to know. Yeah, we have seen this already. 
what are the things that essentially there are two equipments we employ two methods one is pratyaksha another one is inference in inference there are many ways okay many 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 branches are there pramanas you cannot use any one of those pramanas to know that light in that sense we say that pure consciousness or that unconditioned consciousness that brahman is not available to be known then what is the pramana you got to use you have to only rely on this shabda pramana which is the shastras or the guru vakya now the shabda pramana can it be verified using another pramana sir not possible this all these things we have already done okay all those inquiries are preliminarily done if a, if a person asks that we will say go back to basics see so here you cannot ask that question why because as a rule what is established or what is revealed what is taught what is known what can be known through one pramana cannot be validated or invalidated by another pramana that is not possible example when your eye says this is blue color your nose can never come and verify and vouch for it yes it is blue nor your nose can come and say no it is not blue it is green nose can never come and say that why for color and form the only option you have is eyes similarly when it comes to knowledge of god you cannot use any other pramana there is only one pramana which is shruti pramana the statements given in the shastras that's the only way through which you can know there is no other way there is no other means the guru has to come and tell you that so only by this guru upadesha there is a possibility for you to know there is no other way you cannot cross verify that you cannot say that i have to i am going to employ my inferential skills i am going to employ my uh, you know uh, uh, logic tarka and try to establish or this this proof both it will not work finally you have to get it only through this method what is that that is the next one because after the student getting to know what is god he immediately starts asking this question now what is the relationship between me and god so primarily we say what god is a creator you are the created god is supreme you are limited so what can you do whatever you cannot do seek his assistance get it done this is how god will be introduced in your life that's why we say be be, be before you go to your examination do one prostration to ganesha and before doing this you do that do all these things we say why because with your limited capacity for you to ash result is very limited therefore is there a possibility for us to tap into some resource which is bigger than mine appeal to that resource and then wait there is a possibility for getting our results that's it so like you can just send a request may be accepted may not be accepted but there is a good possibility for you to get those grants isn't it like a person say you know sends it for his uh, education loan or they send for this scholarship you can apply for a scholarship but whether you are going to be getting that scholarship or not is not in your hands it is in somebody who is bigger than you 
Suppose if you find someone who is bigger than you, bigger than that source, if you have an access to that source, how easy it would be for you to get that scholarship. So the whole world is created by whom? God. So if you can get an access to God, the chances of you to win is more. This is the preliminary introduction. Right? That is the basic level. But then, the student who goes beyond that and reaches a state of maturity where he says, I am not interested to get anything from the world. Now what do you want me to do? In fact, I have given up all that I have to the world. Right? Now what is there for me to get anything from there? I don't want anything from this. Such a mature personality, such a renunciate, such a man of renunciation, what he will be wanting? He will not want anything. To such a person, this knowledge, this Upadesha is given. What is that Upadesha? Tat Tvam Asi. That the what? This is the Upadesha Vakya. The statement of advice. The advice given by the uh, Guru to the student, Shweta Kedu. A very interesting you know, scene that was. Shweta Kedu, Chandogya Upanishad, Chapter 6. It starts with this story. Very interesting story. Shweta Kedu has completed his Gurukula Vasa and he is coming back. And his father sees him from the window. How, you know, house, the window he sees him. How distance he is coming. Gurukula Vasa is about 12 years. And he has did PG also, post-graduation. So he was there for a few more years. So he was there for another four years. So about 16 years he was there in the Gurukula and he is coming back. The way he is walking back, the father sees the son and the Upanishad registers, says he was saddened. You believe? The father is seeing the son after 16 years. Hmm? From a distance when you see him, instead of getting excited, he feels sad. He feels sorry. Why? The way the sun is walking. The walk of the sun has a tremendous pride. With so erect he is coming, he says. He says. That ego, full of ego, he is coming. Uh, nothing in this world will give you ego like that of knowledge. See, nothing. Particularly this knowledge. See, it needs very difficult to overcome that arrogance. It's not easy. But it is so interesting to see this you know, knowledge. The son is walking back and the father comes outside the house, is not even allowing the son to enter the house. He's keeping that fellow on the street and asking him quite quite question. Did you learn that knowledge knowing which everything is known? Did you learn that? But imagine what would be the sun feeling after 16 years and he has got gold medal and all in his, in his you know, university. He's coming back. His father is asking, 
Did you learn that? He says, there is no such knowledge. Do you know that? He asks. Say it again. You are asking me as though, have you learned that? It's like you, you ask your child, you know, son or grandson or daughter, son or all, and you ask nowadays. Earlier they don't, but nowadays you ask them, you know, why did you score this much? They immediately ask, what, what did you score in your school days? How much you scored? How many subjects you have had? You had one subject called science. In that you had physics, chemistry, biology. Hmm? Now I have to study physics separate, chemistry separate, biology separate. Don't ask me all that. Same way Shweti Ketu is asking. All that. And he says, let me go and check with my guru. So he goes back to his guru. He goes and asks his guru, what is that knowledge knowing which everything is known? Fascinating. The guru says, I don't know that. If you know someone who knows, let me know. I will also come with you to learn. And Shweti Gadu is shocked to hear this. He says, what? First, first of all, he couldn't believe that Guru says, I don't know. Hmm? Have you ever heard from me? I don't know. Any question you ask, answer is given. No. Doesn't matter. You will never hear that. Yeah, we know everything in the world. This is the belief we will have. I don't know, will not come, particularly in this subject. And when he this, when his guru says, I don't know, Shweta Gitu was so shocked. More than that was the next one. If you are going to learn from someone, let me know. I will also come with you. I would like to learn that. Shweta Gitu couldn't believe. He comes back. And straight he goes to his father and asks him, look here, the fact that you asked that question to me, you must know the answer. That's the Uttama Adhikari. See, the students were classified into three sections. Uttama Adhikari, Madhyam Adhikari, Adam Adhikari. The three class of students. Best mediocre and the worst. Dumb. In every class you will find all those people. But in my class, all are you know, Uttam Adhikari. Everybody is Uttam Adhikari here. You ask me, what is the proof? You are sitting in my class now. That's the proof. The proof of existence of light is objects are seen. Same way. You know, inferential senses. What is that? And that's where this Upadesha is given by the father to Shri Shvetaketu. Tattva Masi Shvetaketu. And he is so excited by no, for hearing that statement. And he asks him to repeat again. Sir, please repeat. He says, Tattva Masi. He says, not satisfied. Repeat again. And more that son, you know, starts asking the father to repeat. The father gets more excited and says, you are extraordinary student. See, usually when, when a teacher, you know, should get annoyed when the student is asking them to repeat. Say, how many times do you repeat? Here, nine times he repeats. See, Mahavakyas, first of all, Upanishads were known for their cryptic ones. And in that, we are talking about Mahavakya here. Mahavakya means it is such a cryptic statement. Minimum words. Very minimal words. But pregnant with meaning. 
That's why it is called Bhavake. Not because of the lengthiness of the sentence, because of the content. What is the content in that? This is the content in that. What is the content that we have seen in the last class? Bhagatyaga Lakshana. We take. What is that? Swayam Devatatta. I am that Devadatta. That Devadatta and this Devadatta are same. So I am Devadatta. This is that Devadatta. This is the example. That Devadatta whom you knew earlier, whom you got to know there, whom you knew about in Bombay when you were that Devadatta is this Devadatta. Now, that this Devadatta all refers to the same person. But then, that Devadatta was very young, well built, had lot of hairs, and he was very Fair. Now, this Devadatta is what? Old, pale, no hair, weak, is not able to walk properly, so he is carrying a walking stick with him. This, that is totally different Devadatta, this is totally different Devadatta in all aspects, but still, Samanadikaranya. So two things we used. How one we employed this statement as Samanadikaranya. Number one. Number two, we employed is Bhagatyaga Laksham. With these two things, we arrive at something. What is that we arrived at? Arrived at this jiva. And that Saguna Brahman, whom we had introduced to you earlier, yes, what is that Saguna Brahman? What is that Jiva? Jiva de definition of a Jiva is consciousness plus equipments. Karana. Equipments. Avidya. Or else. To put it in a very, you know, this way. Brahman plus Avidya. Or Atman plus Avidya. In, uh, in our tradition, we use these two words. Brahman, Atman, both are same. But whenever we are referring to an individual, we say Atman. Whenever we are referring to the total, we call it as Brahman. It's the same thing. Just two different contexts. We use two different words. You can interchange also. You can put everywhere same word also. There's no big difference. But traditionally, they use it in this, in this manner. So, what is a Jiva? Jiva is equal to Atman plus Avidya. Same way. What is Brahman? What is Sakuna Brahman? What is Ishwara? God. Brahman plus Maya. So what do we do here, sir? We remove Maya aspect of Ishwara. Remove Avidya aspect of Jiva. And then we say, that is this. Tat Thvam Asi. And it is so interesting. We don't say, this is that. That is this. That's the Bhavana. It's a, it is a very interesting Bhavana. Because it's the same thing. If A is equal to B, B is equal to A. It's the same thing. No. What difference does it make? But still, the, the Upanishad says, Tat Thvam Asi. That 
So first emphasis is given to that. This is not a essential one. So first thing they give is this. Because what you put first indicates your level of growth. Who give to whom you give importance first? Isn't it? If you're going to be, I am that is a is a different thing where the accent is more on me first. I come first. In Mahavakya, Upadesha, he says, no, 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 don't do that. Upadesha given by the Guru is, is this. He says, what you are, that you are. Not you are, that thou art. This is the Upadesha Vakya. After taking that Upadesha from the Guru, the student goes and sits. He goes and starts thinking, what I am, what is this, and all that. So that is the next one, third of horizon. Yeah. Great. The third of horizon, I am Atma Brahma. This self is Brahman, is in Mandukya Upanishad, in the Atharvana Veda. I am means this. Atma is your supreme self within. The aphorism states that the Atman self in you is Brahman pervading everywhere. If Brahman is likened to a conflagration, then an individual would be a spark arising from it. Conflagration is fire. So is spark. Both are the element fire. Spark is conflagration. So you so are you the supreme consciousness. Yourself, Atman, is Brahman. Remember this truth at all times. Repeat it to yourself. Entertain this thought until you realize yourself to be Brahman. Hence, this aphorism is known as Abhyasa Vakya, statement of practice. This is the idea here. This appearing in Mandukya Upanishad. Second mantra. Mandukya Upanishad, second mantra. Very performed Upanishad. Sarvam Yetat Brahma, Ayam Atma Brahma is what it says. First it establishes Sarvam Yetat Brahma. In the second mantra, all that is there is Brahman. Since all that is Brahman, I am Atma Brahma. This self is Brahman. And very interesting, you know, Shankara Bhashya is the, the teacher feels so much of compassion to the student, it seems. The teacher takes the finger of the student and places it on himself and says, this Atman is Brahman. That compassion is superb. It's the way, you know, actually he takes his finger and puts, I am Atman. Now when he says, I am, I am Atma, this, what is, or what is that I am Atma? I am Atma means he is pointing, pointing to himself. What is that? That's where this practice is done by the student. So the student takes that as a clue and starts the self-inquiry. What is the self-inquiry? We keep using this word, me, I, I, I. Every word that we use should have a meaning associated with it. You can never have a word without a meaning. Now, this word I is the one which is used by us the most in our life. Hardly we pay attention to what is that we mean by that I. Me. We just use the word I, me is used frequently. But what does it mean? Now, we have seen this already. 
Now it's a little easier now. Anywhere we see, what you should see is not Vachyartha. You should look into the Lakshyartha only. Right. Don't go for this Vachyartha. What is the direct meaning? You have to go in for the implied meaning. What is implied by the term here? I am Atma. What is that? Lakshyartha is the self. The self is Brahman. What is that Brahman? Brahman is that of the nature of Prajnanam. This Prajnanam Brahman. That is why first Lakshana is given. Lakshana Vaki is given first to the student. Then he understands that and he starts this practice. And the Mandukya Punya is a very interesting one. Usually, wherever this Mahavakya appears, you know, first inquiry will happen. Re, you know, inquiry will happen and then conclusion will come this Mahavakya. This Mandukya is exactly opposite. What, what it does is, first it gives that Mahavakya and then only inquiry starts. Only from the third mantra, inquiry starts. In the, in the very interesting one, let's say. Now, what is this? This I am Atma, Brahma. Is it to be proved? What is the proof that you will be requiring to yourself that you exist? What is the proof? Have you ever asked? Sir, what is the proof that I exist? Hmm. Eckhart, no, the fellow who said, I think, therefore I am. So he went to a coffee shop, had a coffee, the attender came, asked, would you like to have one more? Let me think. He said, I don't think so. Poof, the fellow disappeared. Because I think, therefore I am. No meaning in this. Do you need any proof? To you, your existence is self-evident. Isn't it? There is no need for something else to come and give a proof to you. There is no need that I have to come and give a certificate that you exist. To you, your existence is self-evident. That self-evident Atma is Brahman. What is that which is self-evident to you? Then we go into the inquiry. In every being, what is there? You have seen this already. What is that? Sentient aspect is there. Insentient aspect is there. That insentient aspect is the body. Right? The body changes. Mind changes. Intellect changes. All this keeps on changing, appearing, disappearing, appearing, disappearing, appearing, disappearing. But there is one thing which is doesn't require anyone to come and say and there. So, what you need to understand, whenever you use the word I, you should be referring to what I, that spark. What is that spark? Spark is nothing but fire. Conflagration also nothing but fire. Both are fire. Only difference is going to be what? Immediately you will say, yes sir, the spark has limited fire, less fire. Conflagration has lot of fire. So that is big fire, this is small fire. But that's not the problem for us here. We say both are fire, yes or no. Correct? That's it. 
This is where the fight will start. From the examples only, fight will happen. Concept wise, nobody fights. See, fight will come from example. Wave and ocean are one and the same. When? When there is a water. But wave is how small wave is, how, what is the size of ocean? The quantum of water that is there in a wave versus quantum of water that is there in the ocean. Is it same? So, what is your knowledge? What is God's knowledge? So, what is I am Atma Brahma says? This is what the problem is. So, you are spark. When we say immediately, the idea will go to the size of it. We are not talking about the size of, of the fire and the, the, the size of the spark and the size of the configuration. That's not the point here. The point is, what is a spark? Spark is fire. In fact, every configuration starts with the spark only. Isn't it? Every aspect of fire starts with the spark. You need a spark. Even in a lighter, you need that spark first. Even when you are taking a matchstick, when you, when you see it carefully, the first one is a small spark that comes. That spark is what is catching up with the entire matchstick. Using that, you can light a lamp. But then, starting point is what? Spark only. The spark and this is some same thing. Depends upon the fuel. The quantum of fuel defines the size of it. Remember. So, configuration when we say here, what do you need to remember immediately? Immediate idea should go to this. So, Pragyanam Brahma taught is what? Pragyanam Brahma means light. Tattvamasi, wave, ocean. Ayamatma Brahma, spark and configuration. If you remember these examples, it will be a little easier for you to understand the ideas. Right? This Pragyanam Brahma, this uh, I am Atma Brahma is designed for contemplation. For you to make that individual contemplation. That's why first it was given and then Vichara happens in the Upanishad. Right? Other, other, other Mahavakyas where Vichara first, Enquiry first and then Mahavakya. Here, it is the other way around. Why? Because this is meant for you to do that inquiry. Now, what sort of inquiry you have to do is where the whole Upanishad is all about. Now, if I have to explain this Mahavakya, this Sarvam Vetak Brahma, I am Atma Brahma, if I have to explain, I have to explain the entire Mandukya Upanishad. Now, that is the explanation for it. Further explanation is given. Vichara comes next. Explanation comes later. Right. Why? Because you are supposed to do that. The student is not able to do. Therefore, the master is doing on behalf of the student there in the Upanishad. Now, here we have done that inquiry already. Therefore, it is we don't have to go through it again. Same thing. So, you just have to repeat. Refresh the same thing then. By inquiring into the nature of the snake, where do you land up? You land up with the rope. You cannot inquire into the rope directly. Not possible. Inquiry cannot be done. That is why in Upadesha Vakya, Tat Tvam Asi. Right? In Abhyasa Vakya, I am Atma Brahma. So here it is exactly opposite. Why? Because that is Guru is making a statement. When the Guru is making a statement, Upadesha is given by him. He starts from that. We as a student take it up and do that Abhyasa. That investigation and inquiry should happen from what is this. I am Atma. Why? 
because today you have no clue of rope, but you know snake. Therefore, you probe into snake. What is that snake? That snake is made up of what? Two things. There is a world, there is a macrocosm, and then this microcosm. Macrocosm has these, these, these things. Microcosm has these, these things. What is that macrocosm? Microcosm. Microcosm is individual. Individual is waker, dreamer, deep sleeper. This waker, dreamer, deep sleeper, and then cosmic waker, cosmic dreamer, cosmic deep, deep sleeper. Jagat. Jiva, Jagat, Enquiry. All this Jiva, Jagat, Enquiry is coupled into one, that is that Om, Pranava. So, once you understand Om, you have understood everything. Right. And what is the background of that Om? What is that Om Enquiry? What is that study? That is Brahman. This is how the conclusion happens. So this I am Atma Brahma inquiry is inquiry into yourself. Like what Ramana Maharishi says as who am I? Start from, don't start from who is God? Where is God? Don't start from them. Abhyasa should be done from what is Jiva? Nature of Jiva should be inquired. What is the constitution of a Jiva? What is the constitution of the Jagat? What is the relationship between Jiva and Jagat? From where did the Jagat come about, etc. All this is studied in that Mandalika Upanishad. Finally, you arrive at a conclusion. What is it? All this is nothing but that Brahman. What is the nature of that Brahman? Pragyanam Brahman. That you go here again. So you, you refer back to the Lakshana. So, Lakshana Vakya is the standard. Then, Upadesha is given by the teacher and the student starts the self-enquiry. After Upadesha, only self-enquiry can start, not before that. So, when you start self-enquiry, you start from what is the nature of me? Why? Because you don't know rope, you don't know God. So, therefore, no point in discussing about God. But you, you are seeing the snake, right? Let's investigate the snake. What is the source of it? Let's go to the source of that snake. When you go to the source of the snake, where you land? Rope, you land. That is the next Mahavakya. After you go and land there, then you confirm what Aham Brahmasmi. Aham Brahma Asmi. I am Brahman. That is the last one. Anubhava Vakya. Right. We'll see that in the next class. Thank you.